All right, get ready because today we're going deep into a connection that I guarantee you wouldn't expect. Oh. The world of body surfing. Okay. And yoga. Interesting. We're going to be looking at this book okay. called The Yoga of Body Surfing, An Illustrated Guide to Water Pranayama. That's right. And I have to say, when I first uh, heard that title, yes. I was yeah. like, how can those possibly go together? Right. Body surfing and yoga. Yeah, what were your first thoughts? I mean, they seem like totally different worlds. Yeah, I know. I was curious, too. But that's kind of what we do here, right? That's right. That's the fun part. Uncovering these unexpected connections. Yeah. So the book starts with this story about this guy named John Kennedy. Okay. No, not that John Kennedy, oh. who was living in Madras, India, and he was trying to lose some weight. Okay. And he loved the water, but he thought swimming would make him thinner. Uh -huh. So he would just body surf all the time. Yeah. And that's where it gets kind of interesting, you know, because... The author of the book, Selvaraj Anyasudian, yes. he observed Kennedy doing his thing, riding the waves, and noticed that he would hold his breath no, and kind of get into these specific body positions, almost like yogic breathing techniques and postures. Exactly. So that sparked the idea. Could body surfing be a form of unintentional yoga? Right. Unintentional yoga. That's kind of a cool concept. I, know, I love that. But it makes sense when you think about it. It does. So... Yoga involves asana, which is the poses, mudras, which are the hand gestures, panayama, the breath control, and then dhyan, yeah. the concentration, right? Mm -hmm. So how does body surfing fit into all of this? Well, the book argues that it actually embodies all four. Really? Yeah. When you're body surfing, you are constantly adjusting your body to the shape of the wave. Right. Like in yoga. Right. And then you use your hands to create lift and glide through the water which is similar to hydrofoiling. Oh, interesting. Like yeah. a surfboard fin. Right, exactly. Okay, so that makes sense. And obviously, holding your breath while you're riding a wave. Totally. That's pranayama, right. Yeah. What about that mental aspect, the dhyan? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because navigating the waves requires so much focus. Right. Just like dhyan. Right. You have to be completely present, reading the water, you know, ant anticipating the wave's movement. Yeah, yeah. Making decisions quickly to stay safe. Yeah. Totally and right. ride successfully. So every time someone catches a wave, they're unintentionally engaging in these yogic principles. That's the idea. That's really cool. It is. And it gets even more interesting when you think about different body surfing styles oh, okay. and yeah. locations. Yeah. Leading to variations in what the book calls asanas. Okay. Now I'm really interested. Different yeah. locations, different asanas. That's right. Give me an example. So like the wedge in Newport Beach. Okay. It's known for these deep, powerful waves, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. created by the jetty. Right. And body surfers at the wedge have developed these really unique postures. Oh, wow. To handle the conditions. Like what? Like the Fred. The Fred. Yeah. Okay. And it's evolved into the chicken wing. The chicken wing. I'm picturing that in my head. I know. They have the best names. That's crazy. So the environment really shapes the style? It does. What about other locations? Another great example is Point Panic in Oahu, Hawaii. Okay, yeah. It's known for this perfect right-hand reef break. Okay. So the wave breaks over the reef, creating a fast, yeah. hollow wave. Yeah. Ideal for body surfing. Right. And they've mastered this technique there called driving the truck. Driving the truck. Yeah, using your arms and hands Oh wow. to maneuver inside the tube. Oh, so like a steering wheel. Yeah, exactly. That's incredible. I know. It's amazing to watch. So I'm starting to understand how the location really dictates, like, the technique. It does. It's like nature is choreographing the dance moves. Yeah, it is. But is there more to this yoga of body surfing than just, like, the physical side of it? Yeah. What about, like, the mental and sensory experience? You're right. The book doesn't stop there. It delves into the mental and sensory side. Okay. Featuring quotes from legendary body surfers. Oh, okay. Like Gary Muller and Mike Stewart. Oh, cool. Who describe the sport in a way that goes way beyond the physical. I'm always fascinated by the way athletes describe their experiences. Right. Like, what do they say? Muller has this interesting take on navigating the impact zone. Yeah. That area where the waves are breaking. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, and he compares swimming out through those... <laughs> crashing waves to like facing challenges in life oh interesting yeah he talks about reacting with purpose instead of panic okay and the incredible clarity uh -huh. and awareness that comes after riding a challenging wave wow it's like the wave teaches you how to navigate life's storms with resilience 
That's such a powerful analogy. I love that. It's a good one, right? <laughs> so it's not just about riding the wave. It's about that mental and emotional resilience that it can cultivate. Exactly. That's so cool. And then there's Mike Stewart, who talks about the simplicity and purity of body surfing. Okay. And contrasts it with, you know, all the information overload of modern life. Oh, right, right. And highlights that feeling of being completely present in the moment, you know, connected to the wave. Yeah. And nothing else. It's like a form of moving meditation. Yeah, totally. A way to unplug and reconnect with something more essential. Exactly. So we're seeing how body surfing goes beyond just catching a wave. Uh -huh. It's about connecting to nature, a sense of presence and awareness. Yes. Even a way to navigate life's challenges. It is. It's all kind of coming together now. It is. And that's what leads to this idea of body surfing as a modern yoga. Right. Okay. It's not about following a set sequence of poses. Right. Right. It's about adapting to the ever-changing environment of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's spontaneous yoga that demands both instinctual and conscious responses. Okay, so walk me through this again. How does the book make that connection? So it all comes back to those four elements of yoga. Right, the asana, mudras, pranayama, and dhyan. Exactly. Okay. Body surfing naturally incorporates all of them, but in this unique way. Right, so it's not a set sequence. No. It's adapting to whatever the ocean throws at you. Exactly. So every time a body surfer adjusts their body, they're essentially performing a unique asana. Yes. And when they hold their breath, it's a spontaneous pranayama practice. That's right. And then all the focus and concentration to navigate the wave, that's tan. It is, that's it. This is blowing my mind. It really challenges like how I think about yoga. Yeah. But there's one more piece of this, right? Yeah. The connection to nature. Right, which is a crucial one. Yeah. The book argues that body surfing offers this escape from all the digital overload. Right. And allows us to reconnect with the natural world. Yeah. It's about experiencing that joy of movement. Uh -huh. Just like other marine animals. It's about tapping into something primal. Yeah. That we've kind of lost. That we've lost touch with. So body surfing isn't just about catching a wave. No. It's about reconnecting with our primal selves, finding that peace and presence in nature, yes. experiencing the joy of movement in its purest form. Intricately put. This is this is great. Um, what do you think about looking at a specific spot mentioned in the book? Yeah, let's do it. Shipwrecks on the island of Kauai. Yes. She. What makes this location special? Yeah, I'm curious. So shipwrecks is known for these powerful shore break waves. Okay. And it requires a high level of skill and focus. Oh, wow. To ride those waves. So it's not for beginners? No. What does it look like to ride a wave at shipwrecks? It's intense. Yeah. You've got this massive wave, eight feet or more, yeah. crashing towards the shore. Oh, man. And the body surfer has to be in the perfect position. <sighs> arms and legs extended to catch the wave right. and glide along its face. I can only imagine the power. It's incredible. It takes a lot of skill and courage to do it. Yeah, I bet. And the book highlights how writing at shipwrecks really emphasizes the asana and mudra aspects. Oh, really? Yeah, because you constantly have to adjust your body position and your hand placement right. to stay on the wave Yeah. and maintain control. It's like a dance. It is, like a flow guided by the wave. Wow. And the breath control, the pranayama, mm -hmm. is also crucial. Right, of course, yeah. Holding your breath at the right moment. Yeah. Taking deep inhales when you surface. Yeah. It's all part of navigating those intense conditions. It sounds like a real test. It is, it is. A physical and mental strength. Yeah, and that's where the Dion comes in. Right. You have to be completely focused. Yeah. Reading the wave. Yeah. Anticipating its movement, making split-second decisions. To stay safe and ride the wave. Exactly. It's like moving meditation. You're so absorbed in the moment. You are, you are. Responding to the challenges. That's it. With clarity and focus. Precisely. And that's why shipwrecks is such a powerful example of the yoga of body surfing. Yeah. It's a place where you truly experience that interconnectedness right. of mind, body, and nature. It's amazing how the book takes us through these different places. Yeah. Showing us how the yoga of body surfing manifests in different ways. It does. It's like it really is a testament to the adaptability and versatility of this modern yoga. So we've looked at the mental and sensory aspects. Right. We've talked about the connection to nature. Yeah. We've seen how the four elements of Hatha yoga come alive. Yeah. In this really dynamic sport. Uh huh. But like, what does it all mean? That's a good question. How do we how do we apply this to our own lives? Right. 
What insights can we glean from this? One key takeaway is that it's important to find activities that challenge us. Yeah. Physically and mentally. Right. Activities that demand our full presence. Okay, like body surfing. Yeah, like body surfing. But it doesn't have to be something so extreme. Right. It could be as simple as trying a new yoga class. Yeah. Or learning a new skill. Right, right. The key is that it engages our mind and body. Yeah, I like that. And another takeaway is the power of connecting with nature. Oh, totally. Whether it's through body surfing, hiking, gardening, yeah. or just spending time outdoors. Uh-huh. Immersing ourselves in the natural world can have profound benefits. Yeah. It helps us to reduce stress, improve our mood. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. feel more grounded and connected. It's about escaping that digital noise, slowing down, and reconnecting with something bigger than ourselves. Exactly. Well, what if we live in a city? That's a good point. We don't have easy access to nature. Even small doses can make a difference. Okay. Taking a walk in a park, visiting a botanical garden. Yeah. Even bringing plants into your home can help. Right. right. The key is to make a conscious effort. Yeah. To incorporate nature into daily life. Yeah, totally. And finally, I think the book reminds us that yoga isn't just about, yeah. like, you know, physical postures and breathing exercises. Yeah. It's a way of life. It is. A way of being in the world that encompasses, you know, mindfulness, presence, yeah. and a deep connection to ourselves and our surroundings. That's a message that really resonates with me. Yeah. You know, we can find elements of yoga yeah. in everything we do right. if we approach it with the right mindset. Yeah, it's about finding that stillness amidst the chaos, that sense of presence in each moment. That's it. This has been eye-opening. It has. Who knew that a book about body surfing could offer so much about the nature of yoga and how to live life? It really is incredible. It's amazing. It's a testament to the interconnectedness of everything. It is. Like how even unexpected sources can offer so much wisdom. That's right. And that's what we try to do here. It is. It is. Exploring those unexpected connections, uncovering these hidden insights. That's the goal. And giving you something to think about. Exactly. So as you go about your day, yeah. what waves are you riding in your own life? Ooh, that's a good one. And how can you approach them yes. with the mindfulness, the mm -hmm. presence, yeah. and that adaptable spirit of a body surfer? I love that. Until next time. Yes. Keep diving deep and keep exploring. Keep exploring. Those connections that make life so interesting. So interesting. And surprising. And surprising. It's interesting how the book looks at these seemingly simple things, you know? Yeah. Like holding your breath when you're riding a wave. Right. And it like reveals a deeper significance. Right. It's not just about, you know, not getting water in your lungs. Right. Exactly. We were talking about how that's like a, a spontaneous pranayama practice. Yeah. But like what's actually happening there? Is there like a physiological benefit to it? There is. There's a lot happening, actually. Really? Yeah. So when you hold your breath, your body goes through these changes, uh -huh. your heart rate slows down. Okay. Your blood vessels constrict and your body starts to conserve oxygen. Wow. And that actually triggers all these hormonal responses <laughs> that can have a calming effect really? on your nervous system. So it's like a natural stress reliever built into body surfing. It is, yeah. That's so cool. And there's more. Oh, there's more. There's controlled breath holding. Yeah. When done safely, obviously. Right. Course. can actually increase your lung capacity over time. Oh, wow, like free diving. Similar to that, yeah. That's fascinating. It makes you wonder if the yogis who, you know, yeah. develop pranayama techniques, right. were they tapping into something that our bodies naturally do? It's a really interesting thought. It is. And it speaks to how interconnected these practices are. Yeah. Whether it's intentional or unintentional. Right. You know, that controlled breathing. Yeah it can have a huge impact right. on our well-being. Okay, so we're seeing how like the physical act of body surfing can be like a spontaneous yoga. Yes. But what about the mental side? Yeah. We were talking about those quotes yeah. from Gary Mahler and Mike Stewart. Right. And I'm curious to go a little deeper into their perspectives. Okay. What really stood out to you? For me, it was Mahler's description of the impact zone. Oh, yeah, yeah. That area where the waves are breaking. Right. That can be intense. It can be. And he compares navigating that to facing challenges in life. Oh, wow. And emphasizes the importance of like purposeful action okay. over frantic reaction. Right. So staying calm and focused, uh -huh. even amidst the chaos. Right. 
you know, making intentional choices instead of getting swept away. Yeah, I like that. Like the ocean is a metaphor for life. Right, like you can't always control the waves. You can't. But you can control how you react. Exactly. What about the feeling he gets after navigating that challenging wave? He talks about this incredible clarity and awareness. Really? Like he's been cleansed. Wow. By the experience. That's amazing. It's powerful, right? And he connects it to like finding freedom uh -huh. and insight in tough situations. So the wave washes away some of the mental clutter. Yeah, I love that image. It's like the wave is teaching you like how to approach those obstacles with resilience. It is, it is. I love that, that's really powerful. It is. Yeah. What about Mike Stewart? He talks about the simplicity okay. and purity uh -huh. of body surfing. Okay. You know how it helps him escape all the information overload right. of modern life Yeah. and allows him to experience like this pure joy uh -huh. of being one with the wave. I really love that contrast, like the simplicity of body surfing oh. compared to all the complexity of our digital world. Yeah, that's a good reminder. We don't need all the bells and whistles. We don't. To find that joy and fulfillment. That's right. Sometimes it's about, you know, stripping it all away. Yeah. And connecting with something more essential. Exactly. And he talks about the sensory experience. Yeah. Like so vividly. Mm -hmm. The feeling of the water. Yeah. The visuals, the well, adrenaline. It's like you're completely present in that moment. You are. Immersed in the natural world. That's it. So we're seeing how body surfing goes beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. It's about this connection to nature. Yeah. Presence and awareness. Yeah. Even like a, a way to navigate those challenges. It is. It's all coming together now. It is. And that brings us back to this idea of body surfing as in modern yoga. Okay. Remind me how the book makes that connection. So it circles back to those four key elements of Hatha yeah. Yoga. Okay. Asana, mudras, pranayama, wow. dhyan. Right. Body surfing naturally incorporates all of them. Right. But in a unique way. Yes, exactly. It's not just like on a mat following a set sequence. Right, exactly. It's adapting right. to the ever-changing environment. Yeah, yeah. So it's a form of spontaneous yoga. Yeah, I love that. That demands these instinctual and conscious responses. Mm. So every time a body surfer adjusts their body to ride the wave, yeah. they're doing a unique asana. That's right. And holding their breath and controlling their breathing. Yeah. Spontaneous pranayama. That's it. And the focus and concentration, uh -huh. that's Dian. Dian, in action. This is so mind-blowing. It really like changes how I think about yoga. I know. It's cool, isn't it? It is. But there's one more piece of this, right? Yeah. The connection to nature. Right. And it's a crucial one. It is. The book argues that body surfing offers this escape yeah. from all the digital overload. Right. We were just talking about that. And it reconnects us with nature. Yes. It's about experiencing that pure joy of movement. Yeah. Just like other marine animals do. It's primal. It is. It's something that we've kind of lost touch with. We have. Yeah. So body surfing isn't just about catching a wave. It's it, about yeah. reconnecting with our primal selves. Yes. Finding that peace and presence yeah. in the natural world experiencing that joy of movement yes in its purest form i love that it's beautiful and it's something that anyone can benefit from it is yeah you don't have to be an athlete to get that exactly even just a walk on the beach it's yeah. a powerful way to connect it is with nature yeah you know speaking of connecting with nature yes the book talks about this concept of uh blue mind blue mind have you heard of this i have i haven't tell me more so it's this state of calm okay and clarity uh -huh. that we experience when we're near water oh okay it's based on the work of um yeah marine biologist wallace j nichols okay who argues that being near water yeah. can have a huge impact mm -hmm. on our brains and bodies. That makes sense. I've always felt that, like peace yeah. when I'm near the ocean. Yeah, me too. Like all my worries just disappear. It's amazing. It is. And he says that, like the color blue, uh -huh. the sound of waves, yeah. the feeling of water yeah. triggers all these neurochemicals Interesting. that promote relaxation, reduce stress, and enhance creativity. Wow, that's amazing. It is, it is. And he believes that this blue mind yes. is like hardwired uh -huh. into our brain. Yeah, like from our evolutionary past. Hey, when we depended on water for survival. Exactly. So it's like this primal instinct that's been like dormant. Yeah, I love that, yeah. Wow. And the book suggests that body surfing with that connection to the water is a good way to tap into this. It is. It's like aquatic therapy for the soul. Aquatic therapy for the soul. I love that. Yeah. That's perfect. It really captures it. It does. This deep dive has been a real eye-opener. It has. 
It's amazing how a book about body surfing can offer all of this. It is, isn't it? It's about the nature of yoga, the power of connecting with nature. Yeah. And even how our own minds work. Right, right. It's a testament to the connections that exist all around us. It is. Just waiting to be discovered. Yeah. And they often lead to the most profound insights. They do. They do. Speaking of insights. Yeah. There's one more passage from the book. Okay. That I think is worth looking at. Yeah, let's hear it. It's a quote from a veteran body surfer. Okay. And he describes the feeling of being inside the tube. Oh, wow. He says it's like being in the womb of the ocean. Wow. A place of pure potentiality where anything is possible. That's beautiful. What do you think he means by that? I think he's talking about that feeling of like surrender uh -huh. and trust yeah. when you're in the wave. Right. You know, letting go of control yeah. and letting yourself be carried by the ocean. It's like a metaphor for life. It is. Learning to trust the process. Yeah. Embrace the unknown. Yeah. And like allow yourself to be guided. Yes. By something bigger than yourself. Exactly. And it's this beautiful reminder. Yeah. That even in the chaos and uncertainty. Right. There's this deep sense of peace. Yeah. And potential waiting to be discovered. I love that. Yeah, that image of being in the womb of the ocean is really powerful. It is, isn't it? It's stuck with me. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful way to describe that well, feeling of surrender and potentiality. It really speaks to how body surfing can be transformative. Yeah. How it can take us beyond just the physical right. and connect us to something deeper. Right. Something almost spiritual, you know. We started this deep dive talking about the connection between body surfing and yoga. Yeah. And now it feels like those lines are totally blurred. I know. They're the same thing. It's interesting how the book kind of changes how we think about yoga. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in a studio. Right. It's about like being present and adapting to life. Right. Like a uh, body surfer with the waves. Yeah. Like finding that state of flow. Exactly. In everyday life. Yeah. Whether we're at work having a tough conversation right right or just trying to like stay grounded right when everything feels chaotic and if we think about the bigger picture yeah it's about being mindful of our surroundings yeah. our breath mm -hmm. our body just like a body surfer is aware of the ocean exactly so how do we take that body surfing mindset right and apply it to our tech saturated lives that's the question isn't it because we can't all just run off to the beach Right. Well, remember how Mike Stewart talked about body surfing as a way to like yeah. simplify things? Yes. To strip away all the excess uh -huh. and connect with something essential? Yes, exactly. He talked about escaping all that information overload, right. finding peace in the simplicity That's right. of the wave. It's a powerful message I for see. us, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's about finding those pockets of simplicity in our own lives. Yeah, yeah. Like taking a walk in nature. Okay. Or a few minutes of mindful breathing. Right. Or even just putting our phones down. Oh, yeah. Being present. Being present, right. In a conversation. Yes, exactly. Creating that space for presence. S right. And stillness. Yeah. Away from all the digital noise. And remember Gary Mahler's analogy of the impact zone. Oh, yes. Facing those crashing waves with purpose. Yes. Not panic. Yeah. Approaching those challenges right. with a calm, focused mindset. That's it. Making intentional choices. Exactly. Not that. just reacting impulsively. It's a good lesson for any situation. It is. Whether it's a work deadline or right. a tough personal decision. Yeah. So it's not about becoming a body surfer, literally, mm -hmm. but it's about embracing those qualities yes. that make a good one. Huh. Adaptability, presence, a connection to nature. Right. That calm amidst the chaos. That's it. And those are qualities that can enrich anyone's life. Absolutely. No matter where you live or what you do. They can help us navigate life. Yeah. With more grace and resilience. This has been such an interesting deep dive. It has. Who knew that a book about body surfing right. could offer so much about how to live life? It's incredible. It really is. It shows that everything is connected. It does. And even the most unexpected sources can offer wisdom. That's right. And that's what we try to do here. That's what we do. Exploring those connections. Yes. Uncovering the insight. And hopefully giving you something to think about. Exactly. So as you go about your day, yeah. what waves are you riding? Oh, I like that. And how can you approach them with that same yeah. mindful presence and adaptable spirit? Yes, I love that. Of a body surfer. Until next time.
Yeah. Keep diving deep. Keep diving deep. Keep exploring. Keep exploring. And then them. keep embracing those connections that make life so... Rich and surprising. Rich and surprising. 